Hello. <laughs> Is this working? Yeah. Okay, so I am Veronica Lopez. I come from Mexico City. And, well, the program says that I was supposed to give a talk called Concurrency by Data Structures and Nasty Examples, but this was actually a big, big talk. <laughs> so I decided to reduce it a bit. Though, if you really want to see the nasty examples, I will put the whole talk in GitHub for you to see, and you can ask me a lot of questions that I may or might not be able to answer <laughs> in my Twitter account. It's Maria Fibonacci, and I'm not called like that, by the way. Okay, so who am I? As they have kindly presented me, I am a former physicist, gone computer scientist. In my free time, I go to school to be a computer scientist, but I am originally a physicist. Um, I'm an, an Android developer. I have been this for six years, Python as well, well, Django developer. And I'm training to be a Debian developer, though it's taken me a long time. And I'm also an instructor uh, in Mexico City. Um, as they have also said, I'm a researcher for the Nuclear Physics Institute. So I am not a nuclear physicist, so <laughs> don't get excited. I'm just <laughs> like, uh, I, I help them to do good code because uh, physicists, at least in Mexico and some parts in the United States, we use Python for simulations. And before that, we used to use Fortran. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and physicists don't really code. They, they or we, <laughs> just put... Uh, functions and that's okay because that's the only thing they need so when they need to do some code for an important paper that's going to be displayed in nature or science or something like that I am there to to be the bound between the physics and the actual code and I love tea cats traveling and sleeping okay so first first of all why data structures um, in my case, as a non-computer scientist from origin, uh, it's very easy to forget about data structures when developing a, anything. Let it be a small program, a small script, or distributed computing. So, well, why data structures are important? Because it help, they help you keep your code organized and solve specific and targeted problems and also take full advantage of the language, like, for example, in Go, we have beautiful um, data structures that should be taken advantage of. So, um, and they are not um, strictly equivalent to other languages. Like, for example, if you come from Ruby or Evil Java, well, they're not like the hash uh, patterns, I don't know, how we traditionally call them. And then, why concurrency in Go? Uh, well, uh, when the developer advocates uh, tell you <laughs> and want to get more, more developers, more Go developers, they, they give you all the full features of Go, right? It's like, oh, concurrency, oh, this and that, and dog typing, I don't know. So that is like for engaging people, but in the, the actual world, well, they, they say another thing, but I will get there. So, concurrency in Go is one of the main features. It is said in all of the literature, all the books. It's listed as one of the star features of Go, besides the, the easy uh, syntax, and I don't know. And, well, concurrency in Go uh, helps you take advantage of the um, uh, more modern architectures. Uh, multi-core, etc. But they always tell you not to use it. Like if you have seen or read uh, most mainstream books that I won't tell names uh, in, in of Go, they they will always tell you like, oh, Go has this and this and this and concurrency. But don't use concurrency because it's terrible and you will get into trouble and don't use it and blah, 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 blah. So I was like, why? <laughs> if you're inviting me to use Go because of 
it's concurrent nature and blah 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 and then you tell me not to touch it is like why and personally coming from evil java or in other traditional languages uh, i would advise not to touch the other shady paradigm in go which is object oriented which is good but uh, as i don't remember who who actually mentioned it it's not um the same as in Ruby, for example, or the modeling of the actual world, etc. Okay, so uh, if we're going to use concurrency, uh, we're going to use it correctly, right? And here we have the cons that are the difficulties that they uh, always mention of why you shouldn't use uh, uh, concurrency in Go, even though they told you it. It is one of Go's main features. So the parameter termination, uh, like for example, um, has anyone here done serious concurrent systems? All right, non-serious concurrent systems. <laughs> All right. So I didn't want to give you a lecture on, on concurrency because I'm a physicist and we always are very boring lecturing about scientific terms, so I will just tell you about my experience. So, the cons or difficulties is the parameter termination that, in other words, would be, uh, let's say you have two threads. This is in general, not just for Go. You have two threads or Go routines. If this one is already done and this one isn't, then your program terminates with, without giving the actual um, product or result that you wanted. Then the deadlocks, um, that happens everywhere. Then failure to report a completion of, of processing that it has to, to do with parameter termination. Uh, sending pointers or references can be unsafe since, well, we remember that Go has a lot to share with C. Uh, anybody here is fluent in C? All right. So, I guess you won't have any problems, but for ignorant people like me, it is a problem. So sending pointers or references can be unsafe, or in case you know how to actually use them, uh, it's because you are already skilled. So what's the point of using Go because it's simple and it's concurrent if you have to do all of that stuff behind, right? So on the bright side, we have the Go routines, which are way lighter than traditional uh, threats. Uh, no explicit locking required, so it is possible to, to do locking in, in Go uh, systems. Um, and this is thanks to communication, communi communication sequential processes. And it also has low and high level support, which is not common in all the languages. They either have low or high level support. And well, the garbage collection. And well, finally, our stars here, which will be the data structures made specifically for Go, which are channels, slices, arrays, um, I don't know, which can together with channels in other um, main Go futures, we can create new data structures. Okay, so if you had a checklist for a real concurrent system, um, this, I think this would be the, the, the best checklist to have. Um, in which, well, the first point is the conflict management, which can translate in all the other bullets. Uh, transactional memory, which in databases uh, you, you usually call atomicity. That this means that, well, I'm not trying to lecture you, but <laughs> in case anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, uh, when you have a concurrent system and you want to go from A to B, well, from A, B to C, um, you really want uh, that the data you introduce in A and goes to B, then in C it, it will be consistent with what you put in A. Um, and this means that the B thread or go routine or whatever uh, works fine. If it doesn't work fine, well, it will be reliable. 
um, you, when you are constructing or, well, not before that, when you're designing your system, uh, you have to, to know if you're going to use logs or not using them. Uh, this means enforcing limits uh, for avoiding um, the misuse of threats and space-time complexity, uh, scalability, and dynamic capacity. All right, so the one uh, data structure that I'm going to use here is the arrays, which uh, not always, but very frequently are um, used, uh, well, arrays and slices are commonly uh, equivalent in Go. Not every time, but for this example, it works. So here we have a little, little extract of code, uh, which basically instantiates a new execution thread. Uh, and it iterates over the array or the slice and calls, the, and calls a function for each new element in I++. Okay? So, well, the problem with this one is that, uh, well, it has two problems, but I will just mention one right now. Uh, the, problem, the first problem with this one is that it goes one by one by one, and it, uh, well, the, the second example is here. It's, it's, it does the same, but it's a little sped up. So when you call go, it creates the, well, in this case, the foo function as a separate go routine already. But um, well, the problem with this uh, little excerpt of code is that it can become dangerous because you have no constraints into, well, it just goes on and on and on into each element of the array or the slice, and then a Go routine is created and you don't have any control. And, well, you usually can do it like this if you know what, what you're doing, but if you don't, which is most of the people here, including me, <laughs> we have to put ourselves constraints constraints, right? So, holding the horses, the sa that same example, but creating some constraints. So, there, um, in the end, is, this is like very scientific of me to put, <laughs> instead of just putting an, an X or something, I just put an N. Um, so, it, it basically does the same, but the N is our constraint. So, the n would represent the, the limit, and n, n would be uh, the, the last item of, of the array. So for the element n plus 1, it will just stop and won't let you mess up. <laughs> okay, so well, this is what I just said. Uh, it creates uh, here, c is the channel created that holds at most n elements and sends a true boolean uh, into the channel for every new goroutine that's been created and it gets blocked in n plus one and well in this case the, the most straightforward case would be the number of CPUs that you have in your system but it can be used um, for more purposes. Okay so now the main reason I, I am standing here. <laughs> so I do go code uh, for a hobby, <laughs> but because in Mexico there are not a lot of opportunities to be a serious Go programmer. Um, but, well, there is Android, and I have been an evil Java developer for many years, so um, I have a lot more of experience with that. So, when I heard that uh, Android was getting, well, Go was getting some support for Android, I got very excited, but uh, you must know that it is still very painful, very painful. So painful that, well, who here has created an Android app, a serious Android app? Okay, a non-serious Android app? <laughs> the same people that cannot be? <laughs> okay, so in case you want you want to create a new Android app with Go, uh, you must know that it is very painful. Has anyone here created an Android app using Go? Okay, that's it. So it is a bit painful, maybe for you don't, but 
It was for me. <laughs> so it is so painful that even Andrew Joran says that it is painful. He said that in Go 1.4, you can build Android apps if you can work out the Android build system. So I guess you cannot build Android apps. <laughs> and that was said directly by Andrew Joran. So. But however, I managed to do one. And there are some examples in, in GitHub. But they never tell you how to. And now I won't tell you how to either, because I saw how to go over it a few more times. But I have promised to teach that I will create a, a tutorial whenever I feel confident enough. <laughs> OK, so it is still very painful. And for now, you have to have, or at least be familiar with Docker. Uh, develop it is not straightforward. I mean, and with this I mean that um, there are no like equivalencies. For for instance, there is no tutorial. And the only tutorials that I have found online uh, just tell you how to set up the environment, but ish. And they are usually done by Google people. I mean, the people that have been developing it. So <laughs> I don't I don't know. It's not very clear yet. Uh, and well, the last point, lack of pre documentation. That, that term, pre is uh, there's no ready to, to read documentation. I mean, and since Android development is huge, um, we should at least expect to have a guide to, to compare them, to compare how is this done in Java and how is this done in Go. I mean, not to compare the languages, because that's always a bad idea, but, uh, well, just to know how to do the new things, right? So uh, Android concurrency, uh, here's, here's the bond for the two themes. So uh, in Android, uh, for those who have worked um, as a serious Android developer, you may know that concurrency is a big issue in Android even though you, you don't see it in the beginning. So what happens in Android uh, is that, uh, and well, in evil Java all the time, is that you, you start the main thread. And if you don't separate the tasks among um, other tasks, uh, everything goes into the main thread. And then, well, in, in common Java programs, this depends on the resources that you have available. But in Android apps, they usually crash, or they usually um, get locked uh, from the UI. So it's a bad idea to put it all in the main thread. But not every Java developer knows that. And not every Android developer knows that. So uh, by putting everything in the main thread, every statement is executed after the other. And the UI gets blocked until everything is loaded. And that is the best case if you have a good performance device, right? Uh, if not, the application crashes. And well, the Android concurrency is used for background processing, such as fetching images, API requests, and any other tasks that your app has to do. And well, of course, you can use the Java Util concurrent uh, library, but, but that is not a good idea, because Java is huge, and Android is a little bit, well, it's not that huge. And um, huge Java is not suitable for Android devices. So uh, instead of, uh, well, these are some disadvantages of using Java concurrency directly on Android. Uh, if you need to update the, the UI from a new thread, you need to synchronize it with the new UI thread. So we have some options. Uh, instead of using the, the native Java um, option, we have uh, other options like a sync task uh, using the handler uh, well, library functions and the loader class. Uh, so this is what handlers do. Um, and well, um, most of Android developers, we use the async task approach because it's easier. And it's more straightforward than handling handlers <laughs> and handling uh, the loader class, which is a bit more elegant, but sometimes it's not needed. Um, so 
in the async test, which are the most popular resource, uh, what they do, they basically encapsulate the code, like, let's say, you're, you're creating an Android app which uh, has to fetch some images from some API, I don't know, from a web service. And then uh, if the images are not ready, then the UI will get blocked and everything else would, will get blocked, the text, I don't know, the other images, everything will be blocked and the UI will be blank until everything is loaded. So what the sync task does is that it encapsulates the, the background code and lets the other code uh, get printed so that the user gets um, at least some content, right? Instead of just having uh, frozen up. Uh, so the, first, the, the usage for async tasks are as a subclass and well the first difference or something that we can relate to Go uh, is that async task is used with, as generics and well argument variables. So and as everyone knows here uh, Go doesn't have generic support and until I well, the last information that I got is that they won't, but you can tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, so it's more like uh, the functions of how a sync test work. Uh, they bas it basically calls, well, it starts when you call the execute method, and the execute method calls the doing background method and, and post execute. So the doing background does all the tasks, and when it, it has finished and it is done and it has good or bad news, it, report, it reports it directly to the on post execute uh, method, and the post, post execute method prints uh, the information, right? Uh, the disadvantages of a sync task, well, here it, it, is, it can all be summarized as locking, which is another thing that Go can actually solve, because since um, concurrent systems in, in Go do not have to be locked, well, this would be a great relief uh, for Android developers uh, using Go. Uh, and well, uh, when locking, uh, locking goes wrong in Android, uh, the effects of a sync task are usually the opposite because, well, if locking goes wrong, you, you usually get a deadlock. And if you get a deadlock in Android, then nothing gets printed on the screen and everything freezes and then well, you end up having the same exact problem that you began with. Uh, well, that's a little bit the same with the lifecycle life handling for Android apps. And well, finally, the additional considerations. I said all of this because, well, on one side we have, well, we have two beautiful technologies developed by Go by Google. The first one is uh, Go and the second one is Android. So I would have said it the other way around because Android came first. <laughs> but well, whatever. Uh, now uh, most of Android developers, we use Evil Java, which besides Evil is a bit complex. Um, you use a lot of code in order to have effective concurrency for the UI thread. Uh, you have to do a lot of things. You have to do a lot, a lot of work, a lot of code, and it usually goes wrong. That's why we have very ugly Android apps out there. And because, well, it's not rocket science, <laughs> pun intended, but uh, it, it is not as easy to develop uh, good Android apps as it is, for example, in uh, Objective-C or, well, now Swift. Uh, and well, on the other side we have Go, and they promise us that they will have a decent support for, for Android development in the near future, right? <laughs> so, well, it would be great if we had like these uh, features of concurrency in Go uh, implemented in Android. And well, another advantage of it is that uh, hopefully we will be able to use the, the standard library, Go standard library, instead of uh, nowadays, instead of using all the Java resources, there is like another Java version just for Android. 
which is kind of limited or previous uh, Java developers are, have to learn new things which is always good to, to learn new things. I'm always finishing, <laughs> but it's not effective. So if you already know how to code in Go, it would be awesome if you could code straightforwardly in, in Android. So, um, and finally, it, this would imply less resources, no bytecode interpretation, um, as happens now with Dalvik or the Java virtual machine. And well, that's it. Thank <laughs> you.